My name is Edith Dukind, so I am um, a Belgian artist. And um, when the proposition was done to, to make a show here, um, it was kind of difficult for me because usually I, I work uh, regarding the place where, where the exhibition will take place. And um, because I work a lot with the ambience, with the weather, with the quality of space, and so I decided to do something which is a kind of autonomous. So I decided to do this triptych. Um, in fact, it's, I always use si quite silent objects. And uh, they are sil silent in the sense of the form, but also in the sense of the non-representation of, of things. And in this case, um, I show this three, three, three piece. Uh, the, the, these two ones are uh, in piece of wool. It's a very common blanket in Belgium. So for, I think for the Belgium, when they see this kind of object, it's already a kind of Madeleine de Proust for them. But it's also something which can speak to other place of the civilization. A lot of my pieces, they are always objects, everyday objects, and I try to show the nature of their materiality. I always try to do something to give up a little bit more of, to, to put the reality a little bit more up, the reality of this object. In this case, I decided to use for this piece uh, rose gold, and on this piece, uh, silver. Rose gold, we've changed with the time. So this is mineral. This is mineral object that I put on animal object. And this materiality is always a lot important for me to reveal the, the life of, because it, it's very silent, but in fact, everything sti is still alive. So the, the gold which will change, the gold come from the earth from, from the inside the earth. It's the same case for the, this piece, which is cotton, with, which is a vegetal. And I put, I put this one, for example, to the, to the middle inside the ground. It was put in, in the ground in Belgium. Normally, I use them in different places. So it's always a, a, a way to observe things and to not act too much in, in, with the object. And this, this third object, for example, is also a blanket made of wool and velvet. The border are always velvet. And in this one, there is fold of silver, and the silver will change very, very slowly with time. It will become more golden, more yellow, and little by little gray, and maybe in 100 years, it will be black. So this is very materialistic, and in, in regard to that, I wanted to, to show a non-material object. So it's materialistic, but everything around the object changed the object. And um, I, I wanted to use this object, which is a, it's, it's part of a series, uh, which is a collection of fire. And here, this fire comes from Greece, because I was in Greece this summer. And it's also a, a, a country which is full of, you know, this mystical, uh, mystical surrounding. And this is a collection. And it's, it's a non-material thing, in a way, fire, because we, we know how to do fire. We know how to use it. But in a sense, we still don't know what is fire. I think that I am a very meditative person, in a way, and I, 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 can, I can stay for hours regarding objects, natural or unnatural, or, every, or people, the way they act. And I think what, what, I, what I try to do with my piece is to slow down the people, and to, to, to give them a kind of time, space, 
space of time, time of, I don't know, a kind of moment where they stop and they, they, they look in a different way at things. But regarding perception, I'm very um, um, dedicated to, 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 to do the thing in a way that every people who see the piece can see something different. I try to be the most simple possible, the more geometrical, like this. And it's like, this is like a pattern that you can find in every civilization, the square, the middle of square. You can find them in craft in all the civilization on Earth. So there is no meaning. Even if here you can think in a museum like this that is related to modernism, but it's, it's not specially related, related to modernism. It's related to the very um, basic pattern of all, all the people. So that, that's why I, I, I try to do it very, very simple. But of course, I, am in, an, I have an inheritance from the, the, the minimal art and the Arte Povera, so I didn't in, invent those simplicity in a way. Experimentation for me is something that I, I do when I prepare the, the for example, I, I, I have only small studio, I have two small studios. And when they, the people visit my studio, they always say, oh, it looks more like a, a small, very strange laboratory than a studio because I don't make paintings or I do a lot of drawings, but I, I, I put objects together and I, I see what happened with this object. So sometimes it could be ice, it could be water, it could be dust, air, those element of physical element, which is part of life. And I, I, I do this small experimentation and then when I, I have to involve a space like a museum, the museum becomes my real studio. I do the thing directly, like a kind of direct montage in the place. So, and, and that's very experimental as well because every object normally will change during the show. It will evolve, disappear, appear. And, and so in style show, when it's a solo show, it's more about putting some different character on, on the museum, and then they will act as they want. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work. And for me, it's not import so important. I like when it works, but sometimes it doesn't work, or, or it works in a way that I didn't expect. At the beginning, for me, it's not metaphorical. It's only that for a while I was a lot in my kitchen because I have small children and I was more in the kitchen than in, in my studio. And so ju it just happened like that one day I was, I was in the sink doing, doing dish and, and I, I did that with my hand and I saw a, a soap of a form of a membrane of soap in my hand and I, I, I think that's interesting, but for this piece, I, I, I don't have any shows. I have, I have to do a video about it because it was ephemeral. So I did it first in Belgium. And it's, it seemed to be very simple, but to film this kind of thing is not simple at all. So it takes a while. So that's a provisory object number one. Then I did it, I went to, to, to very north in, in Churchill because I wanted to film the same thing, this membrane of soap and, and see what, and, and I wanted to see what happened when it's freezing. And in fact, the, the soap freezed so, so quickly. It was minus 20 degrees and it, it, it was, it free, it froze really, really quickly and it become like paper and, and then it go up in the wind. But I, I was able to sew it, but the camera was not able to sew it. So we had to slow down the movement. And then with this provisory object two, you see that it, it yes, you see the thing happen because it was so, so quick. And then I went to Africa, to Kinshasa. When I saw it, it was really like a, a, a jewel inside this end, 
with all this color, really like a, a very precious stone or diamond. And then it, it become a metaphor because this guy has this small and very fragile thing in his hand. And it was really for me a metaphor or, or the history or, or what happened in this country, which is that the people are very, very poor, more than poor, they, they are starving, but they have enough uh, minerals or, or well, in, in, in the ground to, 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 for, the, for everyone in, in Congo to be a, a rich, rich guy. But the Occidental doesn't want to, the Western people doesn't want to open it because if they open the gold mine, the diamond mine, every mine that, which are in the, in the, in the ground of, of Congo, it will completely destroy or all the mondial balance about money because there is so much. It's a more rich country, but like a lot of rich country, country which have a lot of resources, people are poor, which is a paradox of our society. So that's a, that's a metaphor, but I think you can see a lot of things.